This is NICU Babies Parent Support with Katherine Whitaker, a podcast from Hand to Hold, a national nonprofit that provides free personalized support, resources, and community before, during, and after a NICU stay. My conversations here will focus on education and personal stories with medical and hospital professionals, counselors, therapists, and NICU moms and dads from across the country. Whether you're preparing for a NICU stay, you're currently there, or your months and years past your stay, you belong here. The NICU is hard. We're here to help. I'm your host, Katherine Whitaker, the mom of six children, including my very own NICU baby, and I'm so honored you're here. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to the podcast. I am so, so thrilled that you're here today. So today's guest and today's topic, you probably don't hear them talked about often, but we're going to talk about them together. Our guest is a certified doula, but she's also a certified birth photographer. So some of you may have heard of birth photography. Some of you may have had a photographer come in and take photos of your baby when you were in the NICU. I know that there are photographers who offer services that if your baby never does leave the NICU, that they take photos for free for your family. So there are lots of different ways to document your stay in the NICU as well as subsequent births post-NICU. And in today's case, the photographer that I have and that I'll be visiting with actually documented our sixth pregnancy. It was actually my seventh pregnancy, my sixth live birth, and it was our baby after our NICU stay. And while Leilani doesn't know this yet, she's probably about to find out that what Leilani did for our family healed us in ways that we did not know that we needed to be healed. She documented some of the most poignant, yet they were some of my most difficult moments of pregnancy and birth and delivery, and she captured them so beautifully. She is someone who, when she enters a room, um, you kind of know that she's there and then you look up and say, I had no idea that you caught that on film or that you saw that or that you captured this moment so beautifully. And so we're going to talk about what photography may look like in your own birth experience, but we're also going to talk about what does a doula look like? Sometimes we think that maybe doulas may or may not have a role, particularly in a high risk pregnancy. And so we're going to dive into what that may look like for your family. And I know that you're going to love her. She is so knowledgeable and so passionate about what she does. And I know this conversation will bless you. Leilani Rogers became interested in birth as a young mom with preterm labor with all four of her children. She became more empowered and informed with each pregnancy. And she documented her first birth in 2011. Her life as an artist intersected with her love for and her knowledge of birth perfectly. She's also a trained doula and a mentor to budding young photographers worldwide. So let's chat. Well, I'm thrilled to have Leilani Rogers. Leilani has been um, a part of our life for, oh my gosh, almost nine years, which seems hard to believe, but you are incredibly talented at what you do. And um, you're also this anomaly of like this connection between doula and birth photographer and master mom all all tied into one. But I wanted to know, Leilani, maybe share with us why, why birth photography? Like how did that get on your radar? Well, thanks for having me, first of all. Um, and I love your family. So this is really fun to come back together after, I don't know how many years, but, and chat with you. Um, so yeah, birth photography kind of came into my life by accident. Uh, I was very interested in birth as a mom giving birth. And, um, my sister-in-law who was about, gosh, I don't know several years behind me and having babies was just starting her family. And I had been dabbling in photography, documentary photography. And she said, I have a great idea. Why don't you come photograph my birth? And that was in 2011. And I was immediately just taken in by the realness of documenting such a sacred and personal and beautiful moment for people. And I just was like, this is it. This is what I'm supposed to be doing. This is what I've been looking for. I wasn't having a whole lot of luck with my clients trusting me more on that documentary side of things like families and stuff. Um, And so this was just like, well, there's really no questions about what you're doing. When you get hired as a birth photographer, people pretty much trust you to just tell their story. And that's exactly what I was looking for at the time. Well, you do it really well. I think there 
I think there was a little, I'll say this, I think there was a little hesitation on my husband's part. So this was our baby following our NICU baby. And I had this desire to sort of capture, and and I mentioned this in my intro, that that you healed us in ways that we didn't know that we needed to be healed through the gift of your photography. And so I, I think about, you know, that I wanted to capture this moment and many moments really. Um, but Scott, my husband was a little bit more hesitant. So what would you say to someone who's thinking, well, maybe... I don't know if I want to invite someone to that really sacred space, but I have this partner, this spouse who's like, I'm not sure about what this all means. Maybe walk us through what that might look like. Yeah. Well, first of all, it's really, really important that you curate a birth circle in, you want to make sure that you feel comfortable and um, like everyone that's in that space is contributing something positive to your experience. So I would say if there is an issue for either of you, it may not be for you because it's important to me also to not feel like I am infringing or like I'm um, interfering with labor or, I mean, labor is so delicate anyways. Uh, I've seen labor stop completely because a mom was not comfortable, not necessarily with the people in the room, but just something about the birth environment. And so it's a very powerful thing to have additional people in your space. And so I just really, I make sure that couples understand like this is an extra person in your space. I am very good at uh, matching the tone of what's going on in the birth room I don't think you need to worry about that, but you need to make sure you're 100% comfortable with me just being there and essentially watching you. You know, as a doula, I'm a lot lot more hands-on and more vocally present. As a photographer, I tend to be a little more in the background and just kind of quietly watch what's happening. So uh, it's a really important question for us to discuss. before they even hire me. And I want to make sure that they feel like we are a good match, you know, like let's make sure we have a face-to-face, a sit down and that you're comfortable with me as a person. And I try hard to get to know them so that they know that I'm interested in them as a person. I'm glad that you mentioned that because I know that whenever you and I first met, I mean, I remember answering so many questions. And when I showed that to my husband, he was like, this feels thorough. And I said, I think she knows what she's doing. I mean, we also looked at some of your photos (laughs) and you were legit to us. But I think, yeah, trusting that person in that space is a really, it's a tender spot. So you mentioned that you, um, that you're also a certified doula. So there might be some people, Leilani, who listen to this, who think, Either that maybe they're in a high risk pregnancy or they had a NICU baby and they're not really sure how like a doula may fit into that space. Maybe give us an example or or walk us through like what is it that a doula does and how might that maybe benefit a mom who's in a pregnancy that might be considered more high risk than than others? Yeah. Well, um my favorite part of being a doula is empowering couples to um be their own advocates and to Uh, feel like they have control over their birth story. Now, outcomes, there are outcomes that you can't control. We know that. But if we're prepared, if, if a doula has prepared you for, you know, when things don't turn out the way you want, how to handle those situations, what do we do when we come at a fork in the road where we have to make a decision that we don't want to make, but we know we have to. And it's like, you know, when you're in the hot spot like that, that is so, it's so hard to, for emotions not to um, influence maybe some very crucial decisions. Um, so I do a lot of grounding with my clients. I make sure that they feel, um, well, I make sure that they're aware that I'm a trauma informed doula. Doula certification on its own may not cover some of these things, but a good doula will seek out trainings that supplement what they have. But what's been required of them in their certification is a doula only. So um, I, these are things that we talk about whether or not there is a known problem with the pregnancy or with the baby or that they're expecting any outcome other than, you know, exactly what they want. And so um, I think that gives them 
a lot of comfort in knowing that, okay, if we come to a crossroads where something goes wrong, you know, heaven forbid, we have someone on our side who can help us advocate for ourselves, try to maintain some piece of our birth plan, maybe that will help us bring us comfort in this situation. Um, that's just, you know, really important to me that, that my clients know all of their options in all scenarios. I mean, I certainly think as I, I've had six live births, which seems crazy to say out loud, um, but I didn't really, I had a great friend who was a doula and and really walked me through because I decided to have a natural birth with my sixth baby. And so it was like unknown territory. And I found that a lot of her advice and, and I was on the phone with her while I was in the hospital, but I also had you there. So I had like this great team of people, but it felt um, like there was some really good communication that was happening that I hadn't experienced before. And I really appreciated that a lot. Yeah, that is really important that you feel like you can voice, you know, your fears, your anxieties beforehand, during and after. I mean, doula, a doula's work does not finish with the birth. Um, you're keeping in touch with families after and making sure that they have the help, you know, in their postpartum circle that they need to recover completely, you know, physically, emotionally, um, sometimes spiritually. So what's the biggest difference, I guess, Leilani, between Dr. Dula? What what do you think would be some of the, the defining factors between what someone might experience with an OBGYN and someone might experience with a doula? So doulas do not do anything medical. There are no medical examinations. We do not give medical advice. We do not um, give any kind of medication. We don't um, perform any sort of procedures. A doula is strictly emotional and physical support. So I do a lot of hands-on support with my clients, you know, hip squeezes, assisting them with labor position changes, a lot of like cheering on, uh, what can we do to make you feel safe right now? And, um, so it's, it's really just having an extra set of hands and just an extra comforting presence that might, you know, keep both both the partners grounded in a lot of ways. You know, if if I look over at, you know, dad and he looks like he's about to pass out from not having eaten, then I hand him a granola bar. So um, it's really just that the extra set of eyes and OBs, I mean, if we're being honest, they come in for the last 15, 20 minutes, they're not really there holding your hand through the whole process. And that's not, you know, a slight to them. That's, that's how it happens. That's how it, they work. They're running from room to room, you know, helping babies be delivered. So a doula can be there with you through the whole thing and prior. And like I said, after. I love the, the marriage of those two things. I think that Leilani, you certainly experienced birth through, a, I mean, as a mom first, and then through the through the eyes of a photographer. And it sort of seems like this natural progression that you moved um, to do. I mean, I can see, oh, I'm sure that you can see that too, but this beautiful, you know, transition from each one to the next. I think um, yeah. the thing that I appreciated most about you, and, and I think this is a trait that many birth photographers have, is that they're very aware of what's going on in the room and they're very open to what may happen next knowing that if we had a manual for how babies would born this would be a lot easier but instead it's really unique which i think makes it really beautiful um amidst some of its challenges but as i think about how you document that and really how you've documented that even beyond birth i mean you started this amazing project i forget what year it was you'll have to remind me the public breastfeeding awareness project which um yeah was really remarkable and really awesome for me personally, because I got to document me nursing my babies. But I know that you documented a lot of things. So maybe walk us through what is and what was the Public Breastfeeding Awareness Project and why were you inspired to start it? I thought it was a beautiful and amazing initiative that you did. Yes. So I started in 2013 on a very experimental basis. It was just me taking pictures of moms breastfeeding at public places. And I had met a photographer um, not too not too recently, and we had talked about um, what 
projects he was working on and what made them successful. And he said, you know, um, a good documentary photographer will find something that has a personal um, meaning to them. Maybe it's a struggle, maybe it's something that they've overcome, but when you can have a personal experience with the subjects that you're photographing, it just creates, you know, a magic. And, um, and so I was like, huh, you know, and I, I hadn't started, um, being, I, I wasn't an exclusive birth photographer yet, but I was moving in that direction anyway. And I was like, well, uh, something that I really wish that I had known as a young mom was that breastfeeding was hard and that you didn't need to hide, you know, when your baby was hungry. I, I had so many, we've all been there, right? You've got a screaming newborn in the store and you're just like flustered and sweating. And maybe you've got some toddlers that are not staying near you. And it's so stressful and how hard it is to feel like, okay, we just got to get through this shopping trip before I can feed you, baby. This poor little helpless baby who's hungry. They're not on a schedule. They're just hungry when they're hungry. And uh, I had so many moments like that where I was flustered as a young mom. And, and I thought, this is it. Like, I think this is something that I can help normalize through photography. And it might even be empowering to some, some women who are wanting to feel more comfortable with this. And so that's kind of where the idea came from. I had no, I had no idea that it would be as successful as it was. I honestly didn't even intend on inviting other photographers to join me, but when my first photos uh, went public, I got a lot of um, feedback that this is something that I would like to do. Uh, would you mind? I know it's your idea, but it seems so important and necessary. And I was like, let's do it together. Let's work on this together. And by 2017, I think, or 18, I had photographers in multiple countries that were participating and we would all share during World Breastfeeding Week, these photos of moms breastfeeding in public places. And it was just a wonderful, beautiful thing and did exactly what I hoped it would connect moms that were either super empowered in this or maybe feeling very timid and needed some encouragement to feel more comfortable breastfeeding in public. So it really was bred out of my own struggle as a young mom. And I wished I could go back and tell that younger me, like, this is okay. This is normal. This is, there's nothing to be ashamed of. So. Oh, the things that we could tell our younger selves, right? I mean, oh. I was blessed to participate in that project. I think for three years that you did it. I, my yeah. last baby wanted to nurse for a long time and I didn't know if we were going to have any more babies. And so I was like, we're just going to do the, we're going to nurse as long as she's going to do it. But, um, yeah. I, I remember looking at some of your photos and really photos that other photographers were taking too and seeing, you know, moms that were using like tube feedings and that 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 it wasn't just one kind of mom in one specific place, yeah. but it was the the gamut of like how do you feed your babies and how are you unashamed to yeah. feed them in places when they're hungry? Because I think many yeah. of us have sat in a public restroom on a toilet feeding our baby, thinking, "What am I doing? This is not normal." So I was so grateful because I was that mom with baby number one, and as I progressed to baby number six, I thought, "When my baby is hungry, I should feed them and not feel ashamed um, for for nurturing life." And so I loved that you showed and your photographers did women in many different places and spaces yeah. nurturing their babies it was beautiful I think you I think you can still follow the hashtag I think it was he let me see it. PBAF how, how did you PBAP, do it PBAP yeah it's PBAP P underscore breastfeeding in real life there we go and I'm and then followed by the year I mean it was it was about six years running I feel like maybe five five years running and I'm so glad you brought that up if I could just comment on that really quick there's so much stigma surrounding breastfeeding and it's not just about doing it openly in public, but it's also the moms that can't breastfeed that are part of that stigma and feel ashamed or less than or guilty because of whatever reason that breastfeeding didn't work out for them. Like I said, at the very beginning, breastfeeding is hard. It was so hard for me. I, I breastfed my children for all different lengths of time, three months, six months, a year, 18 months, 
So I've been there and I've had to push through the cracked nipples and the mastitis and the low milk production. And, and I, man, it's, it's hard work. I don't think anyone really prepares you for how hard it is and all the stigmas that are attached to it. So I really loved being able to highlight, you know, different methods of feeding and that, Hey, it's the same for maybe a mom who chooses to formula feed. Like maybe that's something she feels ashamed of and doesn't want to do in public because she's feeling judged right alongside the woman who is nursing openly. So, um, that was, that was an important piece of the project as well. Yes. No, I thought it was, I thought it was fantastic. And it also helped my other children who were seeing, because many times I was toting them along with us on the photo shoots that they also got to see and support other moms. Like it wasn't weird to them, you know, that they would walk over and like pat the baby's head and like, well, how old is your baby or how old is your toddler? And I love that yeah. for them, it felt very normal. So I think while it normalized things for the moms, Leilani, I think the secondary thing is that it normalized things yeah. for my kids who hopefully will grow up and it will be normal for them too. So I love that project. This podcast is produced by Hand to Hold, a national nonprofit, but we're more than simply a podcast. Be sure to download our app, join one of our support groups or find one-to-one support, enjoy counseling, find loss and bereavement support, participate in a peer-to-peer mentor program, or check out our news articles and family stories at handtohold.org. All of that is at no cost to you. Hand to Hold's mission is to provide personalized support before, during, and after a NICU stay to help ensure that all NICU families thrive. Leilani, there are a lot of people that when they're looking to either hire a doula or hire a photographer, that they have a lot of questions for them and they want to make sure that it's the right fit. So maybe circling back to those two things, doula and also photographer, what what kind of questions would you encourage them to ask to make sure one, it's a good fit and that it's really going to benefit them in the long run? Right. Um, For birth photographers, I think it's important to see what kind of training your birth photographer has had. Um, I'm a certified birth photographer. This is kind of a new thing. Uh, I started a website, certifiedprofessionalbirthphotographer.com in which I shared my knowledge, my trials and errors with young birth photographers, encouraging them to take their training very seriously. Yes, you can put out some beautiful pictures, even without knowledge of birth or understanding of trauma, or if you're a talented photographer, you can get the job done. But are you an like we were talking about earlier, are you an asset to that birth environment? Do you know how to bring uh, peace rather than suck energy from the birth environment? Are you paying your taxes? I mean, it seems silly, but the business side of things is very important. You want someone who is running a legal business. Um, do you have backup photographers? This is another thing that I'm I'm shocked to hear many times. Birth photographers just not showing up. Uh, oh, I couldn't. You know, my kid was sick and I didn't have anyone to watch them. So someone who is legit running a birth photography business will have all these things in place. They will have backup photographers or child care. They will make, make sure that they're informed in many areas of birth and trauma and um and not just have the ability to take beautiful photos um for doulas i think that you know certification is pretty widely expected among um among doulas but there are a few who have just been doing it for many many years and experience has been the best teacher for them Um, I don't boohoo that very much because I do think that experience is the best teacher, but I take a lot of pride in the fact that I put in the hours and I took the classes and I read the books and I, you know, proved myself um, worthy of that, you know, title of being a doula. Um, And then doula tog, which is a marrying of the two. It's kind of a unique thing that um, I had seen done before as a doula tog, you know, I show up in and I support the couples physically until they're pushing. And then I start documenting. I probably do get in a few labor photos, um, but it's just not as heavy on the entire story 
as it is when I am just hired as a birth photographer. So it's a really, it's a, it's a wonderful thing to be able to provide both. Well, I think that you are a trailblazer. You you have all these um, things that you create and that you see a need for and that come from a place um, maybe of, oh, I wish that this had happened for me or I see a need here and I'm going to move forward and try to do that. So I'm so grateful that you do that. So Leilani, you were talking about um, asking questions of both your doula and of your photographer. I guess the, a big question, mm-hmm. particularly for women who are delivering in a hospital, does every hospital allow doulas, does every hospital allow birth photography? I guess, what are some questions that you should be asking of your OBGYN if you decide to employ one or both of those things in your birth experience? Yes, you want to make sure that your doctor is okay with having a photographer there um, or a doula. Um, I don't hear often of of people not being able to attend, except for during the pandemic that just threw everything off. But um, there are probably some remote areas that are maybe less familiar and less trusting of having those additional people. So it's always important to ask and not just your OB because I mean, the OB may end up in some pictures and you want to make sure they're comfortable with that, but also um, nursing staff, you know, you might get a nurse that has never had a doula or a birth photographer in that space before and might tell you no, even though they're not 100% aware of what the hospital's policy is. So being able to say, well, I called ahead, I got approval from my OB, or well, I spoke to hospital coordinator and they said that this was okay, is important. Again, you know, advocating for yourself and not, you know, shrinking in the corner and feeling like everything you're told to do, you have to do. So, um, because it is your birth story, it is, it is your birth. And so you want to make sure that you, you know, feel comfortable advocating for, for those things. Um, but yeah, I would say that most hospitals are pretty comfortable at this point with both birth photographers, uh, and doulas. I do, I do remember when I was um, considering birth photography, um, it was convenient that both your OBGYN and my OBGYN were the same person. <laughs> yes, that so was that so was a, incredible. It was such a beautiful thing. And I love, there was a couple of photos that you took of her and, and I was able to share those with her. And it was a really, yeah. it was a really healing moment for that. So Leilani, I always oh. ask this last question of of all my guests because I think um, advice is such a powerful tool. So if you had to give one piece of advice to a mom that was considering uh, birth photography for her pregnancy, what would your one piece of advice be to her? Oh, I think more than advice I would give. Well, yeah, no, this would qualify as advice. I make sure that all moms, people that identify as moms, feel comfortable in front of the camera, that they're not worried about what they might look like, what type of birth they've chosen or ends up being, you know, given to them. We're talking cesarean births or, you know, hospital transfers, because I do photograph a lot of home births, um, that you recognize that your story is your story. And it is a beautiful story because you're a part of it. And because, you know, you're, you're adding to your family and there's no perfect way to birth. There's no, you know, perfect way to look birth is birth is intense and it it yeah. kind of rips you open you know it's it's an intense experience and it bears all your vulnerabilities and you know by choosing to have it documented you might feel like gosh everything's on display um but i want to make sure that people just feel like they can let go of that let go of those expectations trust their bodies trust the process things will unfold as they need to Um, I'm in capable hands, I'm safe, and just really remind them that, you know, you're beautiful, you're beautiful, no matter whether you're sweating or screaming or cursing, or, you know, if you're, you know, you've got this like intense red face when you're pushing, I mean, it always, I think it always astounds people at how much they appreciate having those photos, not 
knowing what to expect and not knowing how they're going to turn out and just really letting go and surrendering to all of that. Well, I'll have you know, every year on our daughter's birthday, we watch that video that you created and I cry every time because the uh, the experience of birth is a really powerful, beautiful one. And I'm always grateful that you were the one that documented it and that we took a little bit of a leap of faith. And I think birth in many ways, particularly for moms who are listening to this who are able or choose to have a baby after a NICU experience. It's a little bit of a leap of faith and sometimes a big leap of faith. And um, I'm grateful for your knowledge and your experience. It's so good, Leilani. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Wasn't that a great conversation? I love Leilani. I love that her passion for babies has really ebbed and flowed as Leilani has moved through life. It started out and as a, as a mom, certainly, and then in birth photography, and then as a doula, and then as a doula tog. And then one thing that I did not mention, which I think is worth mentioning in my two-minute take, is that she's actually creating a book of her experiences with all of that. And I know I will be the first of all, I'll be the first one to buy it, but what a blessing that will be to people as they figure out what is this birth thing. I think in my two-minute take, the thing that I want to Reemphasize. She said it at the end, but I think it's worth saying again is that your story is your story. You know, sometimes as mom, we, moms, we tend to say like, "How is my NICU baby?" You know, in line with this other kid down the street, or you know, where on milestones are we? Are we matching up with other people's kids and other people's babies? And Leilani's advice, I think, while we were speaking about your experience as a mom, but I think it can be said of really everything in the NICU experience is that own your story, own where you are, own the season that you're in, own the challenges that you have, but also lean into the joys that you have and ask the questions. Don't be afraid to be an advocate for yourself. Don't be afraid to be an advocate for your baby. And certainly when it, we're speaking about creating your birth team, and if a doula is a part of that, if a birth photographer is a part of that, there are so many people that are rooting for you, that are like cheering for you in the corner, like we want to make this a great experience despite some of the challenges that you may be facing. The best possible scenario that we can, you know, come up with in this particular situation. And I know for me, as we had our NICU baby and his birth was traumatic and hard and difficult. And so when our sixth baby came along and I was pregnant with her, I had this deep desire to say, what can I control? What can I document? And how can we sort of reclaim some of our peace, but also how can we find some healing? And in our case, it was the documentation of the birth experience. And as I mentioned to Leilani in the video that that we watch those photos, we look at those photos every year on her birthday, and I'm amazed at how far we have come. And I am deeply grateful that I assembled this beautiful group of people that were in our corner that that documented our birth in her case that I reached out to a friend who was a doula who was great emotional support for me my husband was a rock star as I you know navigated through a natural birth which I had never done before so as I listened to Leilani's words of your story is your story I would love for you to be empowered and to be encouraged by Leilani sharing that and perhaps many of the stories that you've heard over the last several months on the podcast to really own your story, be grateful for your story and be stronger because of your story. And with that, I'll see you next time. Thanks y'all for listening to NICU Baby's Parent Support. Every parent and every experience is welcome here. If you are a NICU parent and you're finding yourself in need of support, please download our app. You can find it in the Apple Store or on Google Play, Hand to Hold. And if you love today's episode, you can share it, you can subscribe, and you can most certainly review it. We would love, love, love your reviews. It's how we reach more NICU parents. Thanks, and I'll see y'all next time.